serious a civilization evolution at the crossroad. We really, I share with you concerns that I, will, I will really fear that we are at the crossroad. So, so which way we turn on the walking would be of options. Uh, the, the first, I, I think, is both of you had this, some kind of a summary or comprehensive drawing of picture of a uh, threat coming to us, either Orwellian 1984 or recently netizens invented this term of COVID 1984 instead of <laughs> not just 19, it's already 1984. Uh, the fact could be. It could be expressed as uh, the freedom word under who at that. Uh, from both outside, for example, uh, communist, Chinese Communist Party bioweapon, and the inside of corrupt politicians. So, so that's the threat perceived, at least for the moment. And the, the situation, if you look into it deeper, and uh, you cannot help to realize that there are four lines between two value systems. And uh, I was trying to do some observation about where this fourth line comes from, how did it happen? And uh, very briefly uh, lay out the corrections that uh, I've seen so far. One direction is for to fix this mess. The other direction is to settle that. Particularly, I, this means within the United States, the two value system might uh, again split it into two different countries, or two different value systems. So, a little bit more into the threat side is that. Uh, at least we can see that the big tech companies is becoming big brothers. And particularly Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, and they are implementing more and more strong censorship. And unfortunately, the club of religious discussion is kind of too academic and too abstract uh, to cause this kind of a censorship. But uh, I'm aware that uh, a good number of YouTubers have uh, different opinions or dissidents to the political correctness. They are being brutally shut down, which I don't feel really about that. Uh, one example would be this uh, probably summary video that. Uh, a good number of people made their um, concerns uh, for this program. Uh, the second one would be very obviously is our universities. Uh, in our universities is becoming more and more a model of uh, indoctrination uh, mechanics instead of promoting uh, freedom of speech. Freedom to think, this phenomenon is called cancel culture, and uh, also the highly heated term of CRT. And I changed a little bit into communist uh, re rise time. <laughs> so, uh, from my perspective, uh, critical race theory, critical nature theory uh, is. Just a violent, and, uh, a mutant of what we can be very familiar with. <clears throat> and also, we see in the media, it's becoming more and more vulnerable as well. Uh, so, the decent, mm -hmm. different opinions uh, are being shut down from the ministry. And that they have to go to uh, some new social media platforms to make their voice heard. 
So that's kind of an intimidating view. And uh, if you look into a deeper situation, uh, you clearly see that uh, there are four lines uh, happening between the rural versus urban Americans, uh, in other words, Trump lovers versus Trump leader, uh, Trump haters. Uh, and between Republic, Republicans and Democrats, between conservatives and progressives, and now become between the best and unbest. Each side will start viewing the other side as planning. Or for obedience versus profitability. Uh, so, coming back to my little uh, theoretical framework of multiple agent self organization, uh, the theory says that uh, different uh, principles, behavior principles, Leading to different organizational processes and leading to different kinds of competing institutions, competing organizations. So, so I think that uh, multiple agent self organization might help us to see this situation more clearly. Now, how this phenomenon happened? How did it happen? Uh, Fearlessly, we discussed about what well, every living system needs to produce, the living system needs to grow. Normally, you have different kind of value, system, uh, value sets. Uh, they're conflicting with each other, but they're both needed by the living system. Uh, for stability versus for change. Uh, for conservative versus progress. Order generating versus uh, breaking the container, breaking, breaking the boundary, and the wood is the terrible. So, so that is uh, one possibility, uh, a source of the, the split. Uh, the second one is what I call cognitive capability, normal distribution, I guess that the bell curve to point of view. Uh, because, because people have different ways of perceiving their world. And, and uh, behind that different ways, they have different capacity of reaching to a certain amount of complex. In other words, if the outside system has a too complex uh, situation, and people tend to simplify it and reduce it, and uh, I mean, not see the, the, the real situation, therefore, uh, not see the coming unintended consequences. So, so that's that might be the second part. The, the third one would be what I call. The proliferation of a new type of corruption. So we all know that uh, power corruption by politicians is about uh, absolute power, uh, corrupt absolute. Mm -hmm. But I have been discussing that uh, a good value being pushed beyond its balance point may also become a new type of abuse. Abuse of the bed. Mm. So, this might also be a possibility. I am just referring to here for you guys to discuss. So, what I see the future in front of all this kind of a mess, uh, I see two different forces going on. Uh, so, so, the first Side is uh, what I call uh, the, the fixing uh, group. Okay, people trying to work out. One example would be this movement uh, or this organization on the waiver and interest. So, 
or all they do, what they're doing is they're trying to fix this division. They're trying to invite both Democrats and conservative uh, uh, Republicans into the same room on the same table and to try to facilitate discussions, conversations, debate. Yeah, they, they, so they, they have a good number of debates uh, from time to time. And uh, this organization is really like what Michael mentioned. It's like it's another grassroots type of uh, movement. They spread, they have uh, multiple chapters in the locations. And the, for the opposite side, is what I call a division. Now, the, a recent uh, a recent uh, poll done by University of Virginia, uh, by the University of Virginia, they reported on uh, <laughs> September 30th on Newsweek. And uh, they have found that 52% uh, of Trump voters and 41% of Biden voters, they all agree that it is time to split the country. In other words, uh, a red American versus a blue American. And so people can move around. And so if you are a red person living in a blue state, you can make a job swap uh, with, with a, a, a different person, uh, a blue person living in a red state. And, and the country split into red and the blue, and each doing the, their, each carry out their own issues and agendas and leading people away. So that is a very interesting uh, opposite uh, forces with this brain and uh, The third possibility might be the balance about this. If none of these two positions uh, are going to materialize, uh, mm -hmm. realize, then, then what I see is chaos, stagnation, violence, looting, and, uh, and uh, what Lucas just said uh, the Middle Ages uh, <laughs> to save us. <laughs> but, so, my question, my key question is actually going back. Is it time now to re-amend our constitution if it is not working? And if yes, why and how? Uh, and from cybernetical language, what is the most important feedback signal of our time? I think that comes back to the theme of the discussion. So, let me contribute to this uh, a new <laughs> distinction in Jeremy's work. The distinction between some of the predatory groups of our society and uh, some or the rest of the group being trade. Uh, first item would be the Communist Party, all of them, no matter in which country. Certainly, high profile in China. Communist Party versus all people live under Communist Party. That is a predatory trade relationship. Uh, the second would be that any dictatorial regimes, they, they, they may not be communist, but the, like Saddam Hussein, uh, that, that sort of Hazar. So all people live in their country, you can create a And of course, the mask versus Jews and corrupted governments, no matter where, that seek absolute power. We are very Jews. This is all taxpayers and all people losing their freedom. We are very suspicious. And, and, and the very currently in this disputed spending bill, 
that create aggression, but the benefit only in the students. And the phrase is all taxpayers and all people suffering from yes. Now, finally, this one free riders on the welfare system. Well, they normally be prepared or perceived as the weak or the disadvantaged. But in my perspective, uh, if they are free riders on the welfare system, not doing any positive contribution and who is this? Like, and uh, they become a public oh, service. Uh, I just a minute. I'm on, on Zoom here and I will have to cut my. No, no, I, I'm. So, so that Klaus, can you my be... last slide and the floor is for yours for discussion. Go ahead, Igor, you mute. I can unmute. Oh, if I may, I think I think you're falling in a in a trap, which is a normal trap of uh, system starting starting to uh, self assess more than it assesses its impact on the environment. Uh, let me quote uh, here here. The purpose of the system is what it does, right? And currently what we do, we try to analyze the system and you know, if you're focusing on US systems here, it's nice to see that from far away. Uh, because if you focus on the system, on free riders, on non tax players, on, on politicians, on each and every group of people who is trying to find a niche to niche to live in the system, which is usually quite unfair. Uh, you know, you, you really need to, to ask yourself on the purpose of the system. How does it change its environments? What does it, it does to the environment? And yeah, in this case, people are also the environment. And if you have a let's say unfair system, you know, you, everybody has every right to try to avoid it, uh, and misinterpret, uh, behave uh, not supportive. And you, you have all kinds of you know, patterns of trying to avoid the system. So yeah, well, actually really, I, my, my question back is, what is the system and what's its purpose? And then, then, you, then you can see if, if these questions of predatory and prey groups are relevant, or maybe you can, you know, see them as a pathological patterns of trying to self-preserve in an unjust system. So how do you define, uh, what is the boundary and what is the, Content about the system. Yeah, and each system, if if you don't, if you design the system, which you don't have really good feedbacks mechanisms embedded, it basically turns sour. And uh, the the general idea of communism is not bad, but the interpretation and uh, how it was implemented, it's really bad. So, uh, and, and, and this is the problem. And some of the dictatorial regimes, you know, started up as revolutionary or trying to free people, but then they did not have uh, the mechanisms embedded uh, to basically stay on the course to work for the people. And this is work for the dictators. And here you have it. You know? Dictator regimes are not just placed here. They have developed over the time. And you, know, you need to first ask them, to, okay, how, how did they become like that? And the second, you, you really need to find a very good uh, way of governing those patterns of misbehavior. 
And uh, frankly, with our limitations, we are not there yet, I think. I don't know, I, I don't know anybody who can really address that, no matter how holistically, or systemically, or using cybernetics, uh, cybernetics how it's being done. Yeah. Michael? Sorry, sorry for not providing questions. It's okay. <laughs> Michael, before it's getting too late for you, I would like to hear your opinion uh, on Lucas and the uh, I. Well, he said, <laughs> yes. in Czech Plus, he said, I'm sorry, but I, I have to leave. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh Thank you very much. I find it very interesting what you're saying. Um, I, it's really a really good talk. I, I wish I could spend more time finding out more about your ideas and thoughts because it's really interesting, very inspiring. Um, <clears throat> particularly when we are faced with, as Lucas says, a situation which is untenable and absolutely atrocious and so strange. <clears throat> And perhaps um, he's correct. I mean, there is a site, there is a, in UFO circles, there is such a thing as exopolitics and the Vatican has an interest in exopolitics. And if you listen to Stephen Greer, mm -hmm. um, who's uh, supposed to be an expert on extraterrestrials, he has his worldwide sort of CE campaign where he gets people to meditate and communicate with uh, extraterrestrials and there's a whole um, anthropology and folklore regarding extraterrestrials. And you've got to take some of it with a pinch of salt, mm -hmm. but some of it is interesting. And obviously we're not alone on, in this universe. So, so it's a good idea. May I just add one, one, thing, oh, yeah. one thing in slide nine. If you remember, if you go out of our conversation, remember slide nine, because it's exactly what we are talking about now, because in slide nine, for the decision whether to accept the phenomenon, there was a warning that those who had, are in contact, that whatever is out there is changing how we perceive and is also changing how our technology perceives. So they had to be, be warned, whatever you, you listen to, whatever you, you, you read, you cannot trust it because we know they have changed both our technology, also what we experience. And this is exactly where, where our humanness lies. This, what is our perception? And how does our perception change this reality where we have to come together? Where I would really also like to add, Michael, that if we get maybe a village or a small city, I think this is the smallest scale on which you can become as healthy again. Because as an individual or as the group, you are not powerful enough to change something. You really have to have an own ecosphere to get out of the, the, the craziness in which we are living completely. at the moment. Yeah. Absolutely, agree, yeah. yeah. I agree completely, yeah. So I hope, hope we can continue when, when you have time and maybe the, the peace, this idea of a peace movement is, I think, no, when, when we think, that every moment it could be over and it's not even our decision because it is just part of how the machines intact. Then when, when not a peace movement, when not now, when, when, there's no later maybe. Absolutely, and I think yes, this I agree. Is a very important point. Yeah. Yeah, very important point you're making, yeah. yeah. Look, it's and, really and wonderful, the, the, sorry. A last thing maybe, last, very last thing. When we come together, then maybe let us also talk about consciousness and the brain and what we can learn maybe through psilocybin and meditation about the nature of our humanness. This is the last, I was really fascinated when you mentioned this. Oh yes, so psilocybin, DMT, 
Uh, yes, there's so many different concepts of this. Um, yeah, it's, you know, there's, um, what's his name? Oh dear. The guy that did holotropic breathing. Um, and I then of course off. there was, yes, right. And then there was Timothy Leary who took LSD, yes. then went to India, came back as Ram Dass. Um, yes, so there's a whole connection between meditation and psilocybin, um, psychedelia. Yeah, there's a connection and it's important to look at that. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, the social is out there and the inside is the neurons. And how it's more than that, work. I think. Yes. Yeah, but I think it's more the brains, but also there's the perceptions, there's the electromagnetic radiation, which is affecting yes. the vibration of a DNA. There's also consciousness, which is, I, in my, you know, you've got to think about it. Is it consciousness part of the brain or is it part and parcel and the basic substance of the universe? Jenny. Jenny Hi. So, um, Michael, I hope you stay on for a, a little while because, uh, uh, or a couple more minutes. I actually have, have two questions and maybe uh, I'll first uh, do the one that Michael can reply to. Um, uh, Lucas, uh, and, and I also have one for you specifically, Jason, and it's a true question, it's not a comment. Uh, but first, Lucas, so you kind of set up the story in a, in a very uh, pointed way. It all started with John von Neumann and yes. how he looked at the world and now he's suffering. So John von Neumann created a story and the story was based on a distinction and, and, and that was on further developing game theory. But John von Neumann also created an interpretation of quantum mechanics that is uniquely his. Yes. Uh, and he kind of popularized it, and that was to treat the human as an extension of the measuring apparatus uh, that is recording the experimental results. And so he is actually the source of the argument of circular causality, uh, which was an argument that was ex uh, explored in the 16th or 17th century. Yes. I don't know exactly who it was, whether it was Hume or someone else. But either way, they were aware of this idea of a human mind that comes up with the theory that actually works and not to kind of use that to explain the superiority of the human mind. So I kind of see a bifurcation here that actually is very simple. We need a different story and, and one that is not grounded on von Neumann's way of thinking. And I kind of hear Michael telling us Mm -hmm. about this different story and that it is actually already happening that there is already work all over the planet on planetary consciousness where people's in line in in the good and the evil people or the praise and the predators and and let's develop a different story uh so i wanted to get your feedback on it and then i wanted to ask a question of uh, something very important that Jason said, I think. So, so do you well, agree that we need a different story? And that once, and, and is that maybe also what Igor was trying to say? We're not there yet because we need certain elements in place to to become better at working with a, a planetary story. Well, you know, it started with the transcendental movement and the overthrow of Emerson in the um, uh, 19th century. And the new thought movement was very much connected with this cosmic God, which was then called substance. Only later when we got Einstein and um, understood the nature of quantum. And then we got David Bohm and then we got research in Princeton and other universities to really understand more about consciousness. But that story has been carrying on. It went through the Beatles. It went through Maharishi. In the 60s, it became significant. And then it lost. So it's always been there. It's been titrated, but it's not been substantial enough. And so we need to get back to that story, that timeline of consciousness going back 5,000, 10,000 years. 
what do you think? Yes. And I think this is happening at the same time. From my perspective. I think so. I agree. Is that one of our, our best chances is that what is now tolerated, to, tolerated only as alternative stories of, on alternative lifestyle. Now is the time for, for all these networks and people to organize and to become resilient. Absolutely. This is that means resilient in their immune systems as well. Because if, if you decrease stress, and increase your happiness profile, you increase your immune system. Yes, and, and this I think has, has to happen in a way of, of a new form of organization that we don't, don't have now at the moment. Because I think from the, from the point of individualism, it is hopeless and we will always end up in the Neumann story, because the Neumann story of, of course also gives you like an eternal life for like some rich people. And there's the, the war that goes on, goes on anyway. So any, anything else is just collect, co collateral damage for the quest of control. And the only thing that can really uh, withstand that are uh, re resilient, not only people, individuals, but re resilient network and communities. That's right, I agree completely. And also, uh, the more, more people come together, the more coherence there is between them, the greater ideas, the greater minds they have. Yes, because from um, now taking the positivist approach, from like our survival approach. <laughs> so. What, what we can learn, and while I picked up the aliens, what we can learn from the aliens is this outside look at the world, that when we look from the outside, then we can see that we all live in the world together, that in a sense, we do not live so much on the world as in the biosphere. And in this biosphere, this is also why psilocybin and the, 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 mic, the mic, neurotransmitters, which do these changes in our brain are important. Because via our cellular system and via our nervous system, we are connected to this biosphere. And the only way really to, 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 to save it is to have this, I see, all in one view. Yeah. So this may, is the only way. Yeah. May I ask? Uh, because it's near the end, and and I think the question I have for Jason is very important in so way. You you brought up the issue of power and corruption, but, but one can also think of it as an addiction to power, and and there is a literature literally on uh, power as something addictive. Uh, and then, of course, it can go in any direction. But Jason, do you think there is a possibility? Uh, this is something I've been thinking about for a while. To, and that's actually a question for everyone. Uh, but it is really about our educational system. So if that, whether uh, children and young people can be encultured or, or educated or whatever you want to call it, in a way that they learn about the dangerous uh, addictive effect of powers as early as possible and then learn how to talk about it and, and strategies to, 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 to help themselves while they're being uh, tempted and stuff like that. Exactly. Uh, I, I agree that actually our Chinese language group are focusing on this question recently as well. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, separating the basic education from the professional occupational education, uh, put them into two different categories. One is to be uh, government supported, sponsored, 
and any uh, for for the occupation or professional kind of skill educational training that should be used to be uh, the market standard that definitely what we are going to discuss. Um, my, I have one more concern on this direction is that because of that uh, uh, cognitive capacity curve, the normal distribution, uh, our hope towards uh, education, enlightenment uh, is, uh, is always limited. I mean, there's always somewhere that you just cannot go to. <laughs> And you have to live with that. And, and so, so that, that opens a different discussion topic. Yeah. Igor, you, you, you have raised your hand. Do you have some more questions? <laughs> oh, Klaus? Um, Klaus? Yes. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Uh, maybe, maybe it's not about, about and Margaret asked about our education, but really about our purpose in the world. Imagine a dictator who is dictating the whole land, right? He's the top of the charts. He doesn't really need money. What he does need, he does need uh, confirmation that he is there to lead the land because otherwise he becomes like nobody. Right, he loses its purpose. What what is it worse for any system than losing your own purpose? You know, it it destroys your ego. It destroys everything. So if you know institutions are not needed anymore, you know you know how much organizational effort there is to to put on the table. Yes, we are important. We are there. It we do have a purpose, and and this is this is quite problematic. This this ego part where you 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 really need to say, okay, well, if I don't have that purpose, I find another one. But it's hard, especially if you are uh, in, in in this part of the system where you're actually leading the system. Yeah, I think Lucas wants to comment. Klaus. You want to say something, or Klaus? Let, let please, Klaus first. Yes. Well, uh, I didn't want to say anything, but uh, to Lucas, if you would have written uh, your book uh, five hundred years ago, you would have not known anything about aliens. You would have said, "God takes care of it." So, what's yes. the purpose of that? I think this is a this is a crop out. So, and this is number one. The second thing is, I think we focus too much on individuals and consciousness and not so much about how people delegate their responsibilities to others, collaborate, coordinate, and that is a social dimension. And I think we, we, we have almost lost that. Now, I, I think I, I do agree that like, the constitution that has to be maybe a revamped or rethought I'm not so sure if we can do that so easily. That was a historical period in which there are a few uh, good thinkers in the United States felt free of the dominating England uh, to invent something which was actually quite remarkable. And I think that maybe one should work, build on it, but I don't think that is so easy unless you have an answer. I don't believe, um, uh, Jason, I don't believe in this um, uh, well, uh, exploiter and exploited. Uh, th that is not, that's too simplistic in my opinion. Um, okay. <clears throat> if, for example, uh, I mean, is, does a system exploit or the people in the system exploit? Uh, that, that to me is a very important issue. And a system doesn't exist without people living it. So I think the issue is really how we live in, in it, how we delegate our choices to a larger community. So I, I think that is a little bit, I, I don't, I don't think that is so 
practical. And I, I think, I, I mean, I have written or mentioned in, in, in terms of the critical cybernetics that in the systems ought to be serving the individuals that constitute them and not the other way around. And I think we make the mistake and often celebrating the system over the individuals that make them so. There is the, the issue of uh, the authoritarian personality, which was, uh, you know, after during the Second World War, uh, was invented as a, as a concept uh, where people simply delegate or submit to an authority. And that makes, in fact, the, the dictatorship or Nazism or whatever. And we find that, for example, also in the United States. And to me, I mean, the Republican Party, I mean, they delegate basically their decision to an abstract entity and, uh, you know, guided by certain vocal people. But uh, the point is actually they submit and the submission is the, the issue. Mm, yeah, may I please reply and give you a very important difference between God and the aliens, because... You know, you don't know more aliens, about... When the aliens, no matter if they exist, this phenom phenomenon, the, the importance of the system is the importance in the doing and the God, God never came and switched nuclear missiles on and off and showed the American military that what they think are their most advanced fighter jets are like Stone Age technology, technology in comparison. So what the God did, God was only a metaphor, but we have an interference without them declaring, hello, we are aliens, we want to make you do these things. There is a better gotcha going on over the case of, of, of changing our, this, which is changing our, our culture, which is nicht, not existent with God. God did not come down documented. There's no, no, no inqu 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 uh, inquiry of the military about what the angels are doing in the military maneuvers. So in interfering with the nuclear decision which decides whether we can go on existing or not, this is the greatest showing of, of existence of power which God never has done. Well, the, you haven't met an alien uh, or talked to an alien and you don't know whether they exist. And I have not seen a God myself. No, but the I've seen a lot of people that believe in it and, and act as if it is so. And I, I, I would not want to uh, submit to some sort of a strange conception of aliens unless we have a chance of talking to them. And so you don't talk about the universe because the universe doesn't talk back? No, the universe doesn't talk. The universe has no language. Exactly. But the, the events happen. And the alien, we have no clue. <laughs> no, we have a lot, but we don't look at it. That, that's think, the whole I think, point. I think the Lucas is alien equals to children's Santa Claus, which by chance calls today, you look like Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's the same function. It's the same yeah. function, right? No, but, but God and Santa Claus, yes, but aliens, no, because we have a history of, of them being able to interfere and outsmarting our best technology and interfering in what is like our most important thing, the most important thing in controlling is if you are a nuclear power or not, and what your nuclear weapons can do. And they show we have an over 40 year history that they can interfere and, and, and switch on and off our, our most nuclear, most important weapons. So, so this is a different reality as if I talk about the Santa Claus or make up a story. 
If the yeah. Russians would doing that, we would have already have a world war. How do they interfere and what evidence do you have that they will? You know the book. Oh, they had, they have over decades. We have in the 60s a, 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 a recognized uh, situation where they shot down an entire nuclear missile base. And we have the same in the 70s, which is documented. And have, with the Pentagon's have, confirmation, yeah. this, is, this is now declared. These are really unidentified phenomena. And th this happened, the, the effect happened. Look how still have Unidentified uh, phenomena, yeah. it's fine. Alien is a different conception. Yeah, but the effect- And unidentified means simply we don't, ex we don't know. We have no clue what it is. It's not I identified. Don't. We don't know the properties. Maybe we, it's a perceptual problem of ours. We have no clue. Well, and I would not want to surrender to something that we strong. have no clue of. And the new, well, off, please. I mean, it's a, it's a useful construction. Uh, you mentioned in the book, Lucas, do you have a PDF version that you can share with us? Your book about the age. Yes, I can share it, yes. And also your, your presentation today, uh, you said that there's a there three page statement. Uh, please also share that with us so I can share with the whole group. Yes, yes. I, I have a, a three pages and a five pages. I will share both if I may, yes. Yeah, and your book. <laughs> the book you <laughs> yes, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. We're a little bit out of time.